I work in food service, front of the house. So in the early days of the pandemic, with restaurants closed, I was taking work wherever I could find it. An old friend of mine had clued me into a medical office that needed someone to come in and do a bit of light filing. I was able to go in at night to limit direct contact with people, so I jumped at the opportunity right away. Ironically, the medical office job had been the safest gig that I'd been offered thus far. I mean, COVID-wise, anyways. I wanted to avoid the bus if I could, due to crowds, so I decided to swing for a rideshare app. It's not all that expensive in my area, and I really didn't want the virus. I headed in at almost 3 a.m. because it was after the cleaning crew had left. I was really kicking myself for being so cautious, though, because I was exhausted. I stumbled onto the block looking for my ride, and to my tired self great relief, the car had spotted me almost immediately, and then pulled up asking, Uber? While I cluelessly wandered up and down the street, searching. The ride was taking a while, but I had only just moved here last year, so I'm not really familiar with all the surrounding areas, and I thought nothing of it. I was pretty alert at first, so I was trying to pass the time playing games on my phone and stuff. But the car didn't have a compatible phone charger, and I wasn't sure the building would have one, so I wanted to save my battery to be able to call a ride back. I shut my phone down into airplane mode, and I eventually drifted off from a combination of tiredness and boredom. Now, I don't often even take rideshare, so being alone with a strange driver often put me a bit on edge. But this guy had a pretty boring car and a very standard look about him. He looked a little like my brother even. Young, clean-kept, listening to jazz. You know, nothing that really screamed that you need to micromanage this trip. When we arrived, the driver tried to wake me up by calling to me from the front, but I was in too deep of a sleep and I couldn't fully distinguish it from my dream. Finally, he awkwardly jimmied my leg to wake me up and then kept saying, Ma'am, ma'am, we're here now. I was a little embarrassed that I'd been that out of it, so I just gave it a hurried, thanks, and then booked it out of the car and into the building. As I looked around, I began to realize that nothing was what I expected of an office park. I had seen a street view of the building when I first looked up the business, and it had appeared to be a strip mall plaza. The further I went, the more loudly alarm bells were ringing in my gut. The structure was semi-dilapidated, and it was pitch black dark past the entryway. Now, I expected some of the lights to be off in the nighttime, but I mean, not the whole building. I skidded across the concrete foundation, comprising what was left of the lobby area, told myself they must just be renovating, and followed signs for the stairs. After what felt like ages, but was most likely just a few minutes, all I had passed was construction equipment, a couple of long doors, and some smashed windows. I was pretty certain that I wasn't going to find a medical office, and figured that maybe I'd mixed up the address. I took out my phone to double check, but once I got it out of airplane mode, I could barely get a signal. I kept moving around in the building, pacing, looking for a stronger signal. I eventually confirmed in my text that I had indeed written down the correct address just by scrolling back, which didn't require service. Since I had only been inside for a few minutes at most, I figured I should try and get in touch with the driver, because if I entered the correct address, then it was only fair that he should continue my ride to the correct place and save me the added fees of calling a second trip, considering this was all his mix-up. The app was taking forever to load with my slow service, but before I could get a cloud of reception, I heard a rustling sound in the lower level of the building. I was on the top floor, and the only stairwell I was aware of was the one that I had taken up, so it would force me in the middle of the building, so there was no way to exit the situation not without encountering whoever was downstairs. In an abandoned building in the latest hours of the night, I figured the chances were high that it was a tweaker, and I had no desire to try slipping past a tweaker, especially when it was late enough that they were probably on something, so jumpy and on edge. I tried to get a text out to a group of my friends with my address, and a request to call 911 to help get me from the property because I didn't feel safe walking in that neighborhood at night 
and I didn't have enough reception to call for a new ride. But the message wasn't sending. Reception was too weak. So I gave up on getting my phone going and started checking for another stairwell, or even windows with balconies, or dumpsters that could be used to exit the second floor as a last resort. In the event that whoever was downstairs came upstairs, I scrambled over to a door with a stair sign on it, but the stairs were completely dilapidated, and it was essentially just a straight drop down to the first floor. At that point, the worst case scenario began to unfold. I heard whoever was downstairs begin making their way up the stairs. I thought fast, and I figured based on my walk about the floor, it was basically a giant loop. So I would have to wait for whoever this was to come up the stairs, wait for them to come all the way up, and then sprint the opposite direction of wherever they were going, and try and get down the stairs and out of the building in time to make it to the road without encountering them. I wasn't anticipating being chased or anything, but I didn't want to piss off a druggie or have a homeless person who might have been living there feel as though I'd trespassed and then become hostile towards me, or have any sort of interaction that could possibly occur at that hour in a creepy-ass abandoned industrial park. I held my breath for what felt like five minutes, but was likely closer to just 30 seconds, and the person appeared at the top of the stairs. To my great relief, it was just the Uber driver. I figured that he had come back for me, realizing that he had left me in the wrong spot, a place that could have worked out to be dangerous. So I then came out from the beam that I was hidden behind and started to wave him down. But then I processed. There was no way for him to realize this had been the wrong address. My stomach lurched forward and my blood chilled to slush. I made eye contact with him very briefly and he was completely calm and composed, but breathing pretty heavily and blocking the stairwell down. On a normal rational day as an outside observer, I could think of a dozen innocent reasons why I might have returned. But in the moment, standing across from him, I just knew in my gut that this was someone with ill intent. I can't remember much more from the ensuing few minutes. Operating solely on muscle memory and instinct, I superman dove for the second stairwell's opening and just let myself fall all the way down to the drop. Thankfully, I don't think he'd seen where I'd gone at first, and though I was in too much pain to know it then, plenty was bruised, but nothing was completely broken. I scrambled up and then threw myself at anything that seemed like it could be the door. It was way too dark to tell, and I was disoriented from the fall, and I wasn't in a calm enough mindset to think to use my phone flashlight. Just before I was able to reach the door, it flew open with a blinding light beaming straight into my eyes. My first thought, though not totally coherent, was, fuck, there's another one of these guys, and I stumbled backwards, trying to find something to hide behind. Before I could, a voice called out. All right, this is the local police department. Everyone get on your knees with your hands in the air. Now, I didn't believe it was the police at first. I was in such a fight or flight mode and had already committed to flight that I continued looking for ways to get out but he kept shining the flashlight right at me as I teetered around and yelled, Hey, I said get on the ground right now. Hands out. Hands where I could see them. He sounded so authoritative that I just automatically did exactly as he asked. He approached me and finally shined the light away from me. It took a second to get my night vision, but once I did, I could see that he really was a police officer. I tried to explain what was happening, but first he started asking me all these questions, and that combined with what had just happened, and my fear of the driver coming back, all snowballed into me being unable to form a single articulate sentence. He was even asking me easy questions like, Can you tell me your name? Do you have any knives, needles, or anything that could poke or cut me? Would you rather talk here or outside? And my stunned babbling in response first led him to believe that I was on something. He directed me out to his car, and once I was safely out of the building, I was able to start getting my bearings a little. I sat on the edge of the back seat of the squad car, with the door open facing out, while he stood across from me and asked me the same exact questions yet again. The first thing I could think to ask was, Did my friends call you? What did they tell you? And he explained no. Nobody called him. He was patrolling the area and noticed a car idling outside of the building that's known to be condemned, 
and nobody's supposed to be inside, and when they are, he knows they're up to no good. He was launching into a speech about how if I'd gone to shoot up or go meet a John, he had resources he could direct me to, and that this wasn't an ideal place to do either of those things, and asking if I had somewhere safe to stay that night. But I was kind of stuck on something else he'd said. Finally, it all clicked. The car. I spilled my whole rideshirt story in a frantic word vomit. The officer looked around, but the car wasn't there anymore. The officer guessed the guy had driven off while we were talking inside the building. He asked me all the details I remembered, and I told him, but there really weren't many. I'd been too tired when the ride started to track much, but the officer realized that I could pull up my Uber app and get all the information. There wasn't really enough reception there, even outdoors. So we sped down the road, and once I had enough bars, the app roared to life, and I had four missed notifications from Uber. They said, hello, I've arrived, and I don't see you. I'm flashing my hazards. And finally, unfortunately your driver had to cancel. At first, I thought the driver was so cunning as to pick me up while sending these fake messages and canceling so that the GPS wouldn't track us, knowing I wouldn't notice because I was asleep with my phone off and exonerating himself. But instead, I checked the car details, checked again, and it was definitely not the same driver. The person who had originally driven me there had not been my Uber. My driver was somewhere else on the street when this guy pulled up to me. The policeman took my statement and said he'd keep an eye out for the guy, but the best that I could give them to go off of was basically young looking Caucasian man with brown hair, sideburns, and a goatee, and he drove a four door sedan. He was wearing a zip up sweatshirt and maybe had a hood which is like one of every four guys in this city. I feel so blessed to have survived this near miss. Suffice to say, I don't take rideshare services anymore. Quadruple check your license plate and driver name. You just really never know. So a little bit of background for my story. I'm a driver for Lyft, and I'm a 27-year-old female. This happened when I was 26. It also happened to be on Halloween night, as the money should have been really great. So story time. So I usually start in the town next to mine. It's only 20 minutes away. On the way there, I get the notification that Mike needs a ride. His pickup area was odd, but still within town limits. I didn't think twice, and I accepted it. His pickup was at a well-known bank. I thought it was odd. It was 11 p.m. and the banks closed hours ago. I sent a notification to the customer, letting him know I was there in the yellow car. I waited about two minutes and he knocked on my window, asking if I was Katie. I said yes and I told him to hop in and buckle up. And he did. He was an older man and he had some food with him as well as a backpack, which he had put both at his feet. We head out to his destination. And at first, he really seemed perfectly fine. He did ask me to pull over so he could call his friends and make sure that they were home just in case. Now honestly, I really don't mind doing this kind of thing, as I know how to handle myself if anything went wrong, but I don't think I saw him call anyone. His phone wasn't dialing out. He just put it up to his ear and said no one answered, so I head back on the road as I wasn't going to wait around forever. I got back on the road, and at the next stoplight, he had asked to see my hands. I figured he wanted to see if my nails were done or something. I said that I'm sorry, but I'd prefer not to, as I really don't like being touched. Not a minute goes by that he asks another question. So I was wondering, can I show you something? Now I'm a nice girl, and I don't see anything wrong with friendliness, so I then respond back with, what? What is it? As I look over, I see this man has exposed himself while also groping himself. Now at this point I'm scared as I'm a girl and with a complete stranger. I then went on to tell him to put himself away or I was going to call the cops. I didn't want to aggravate him though in case he decided to attack me or worse. Luckily there was a gas station just across from the road from the stoplight. 
I pulled in, and I asked him to get the fuck out of my car. That if he didn't, I was gonna pepper spray him. He did get out of my car, but not without calling me a few select words. Now, I did call the cops and give his description, and the locations of the pickup and drop off, and which way he went. I'll never forget this night, as it always serves as a learning lesson for safety for myself and others. I'm very happy to say that I now own a dash cam, as well as a firearm for protection. To all the female rideshare drivers out there, always be safe and listen to your gut. It may save your sanity. I'm a 17 year old girl living in Baltimore, Maryland. For those who don't know, Baltimore hasn't always been the nicest of places to live, though I've mostly gotten along just fine, and luckily, I no longer live in the city, just right outside of it. You can still expect though that I was raised to be hyper aware of my surroundings and very wary of strangers. At this time, my school had just let me out for spring break and we got the announcement for an extended break due to COVID-19. At the time, I didn't drive and neither my sister or my parents could pick me up. And with all my friends not living near me, I really had no choice but to Uber home. I wasn't new to Ubering to and from school. I've actually always had pretty good experiences with Uber up until this point. Either I get the usual quiet, relaxing kind, or I get some really friendly people with interesting conversations. On the day when my driver picked me up, at first it was perfectly fine. We made some polite conversation and we actually were getting along just fine. Now keep in mind, there were only two more common routes to take me back to my home. Both routes only took about 15 minutes, and all included very few main roads and mostly back roads. I also have a habit of looking at my Uber driver's phone whenever it's in that little phone holder. As soon as this guy started going off the suggested route, I became immediately more alert. I continued to converse with this guy, acting like I didn't notice a thing still glancing at the GPS on his phone. The entire time he was off route. Then he pulls into the highway. Never once when I had to take an Uber home did I ever need to get onto the highway. Then it got quiet. It wasn't like the conversation just died down naturally. He just stopped answering me. I immediately became nervous. The guy wasn't taking me anywhere near my home. He was actually going down freeways that would have taken me into a whole different state. I immediately texted my friend group chat with what was happening, showing them the guy's profile and everything, texting them that if I don't respond within an hour to any of them, to call the police. I was way too chicken shit to press the safety button on my phone, because I knew it wasn't uncommon for Uber drivers to purposely take super long routes to get more money. Still. I gathered up all my courage and I spoke up to him, letting him know that I was suspicious of him. Excuse me, I'm sorry, but is this the right way? All the times I've Ubered, I've never been taken on the highway before, I said to him. Pretty much immediately, he started to reassure me that I was safe and he was taking a quicker route. Yeah, fucking right. As I mentioned before, a normal trip home would have only taken about 15 minutes maybe even less. I was in the car for nearly half an hour now. Then I tried to call my dad. He didn't answer. So what I did instead was give an Oscar award winning fake phone call. Hey dad. Yeah, I'm on the highway right now. Yeah, my location is shared with you. Why? Okay. Yep. Yeah, I will. I'll talk to you when I get home. Bye. Love you too. My Uber driver was staring at me for the duration of that entire fake phone call. I hope if he thought my dad knew where I was and that he was expecting me to come home, he would have hopefully not had any ill intentions with me. Right then, suddenly my driver turned into a highway exit and within another 20 minutes, I was on my main road home. I don't think I've ever gotten out of any car so fast in my life. Still though, my dumbass still gave him a decent rating and a tip. I guess because at the time, I truly didn't know if he truly had any ill intentions with me. I mean, it's very likely that he could have just been another Uber driver trying to make an extra buck. And that he did. I nearly got charged $20 more for what I usually had to pay on that trip. 
I still wish that I had emailed some kind of Uber customer service or something and explained the situation. Needless to say, please stay safe out there when Ubering, guys. If your driver ever goes off route for an extended period of time for no apparent reason, make it known that you're aware of it and that you're on to them. It could just very much possibly save your life. <laughs>